shall we? Oh. Not turning over. Not a good sign. How is there three times the correct amount of oil in this engine? Um, uh, what? What's up guys? Welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. Finally, another motorcycle on my channel. It's been way too long. This is a brand new bike I just rolled in yesterday. This is a 1981 Yamaha XV750 Virago. It's got a V-twin, 750cc motor, and these bikes were known to have some problems, a lot of problems with the starter motors, and it's a really heavy bike. So I bought it just planning on parting it out, to be honest, but if I can get this thing running, I'm gonna turn it into something cool. So let's see how this goes. And you would never believe what I paid for it. Drum roll, please. $100. I cannot believe it. Uh, I saw it on Facebook Marketplace and the title was, I just want it <laughs> out of my garage. So you know when you see something like that, you're gonna get a good deal. But don't get me wrong, there's definitely something suspicious about this bike. In the picture, there, there was a big oil spill under the bike in the picture. So that's never a good sign. When I pull up to pick up the bike, it is uh, rolled out into his driveway, away from where the oil leak was, I guess, because there's no leak under it. Then I brought it home, and wouldn't you know it, now there's an oil leak under the bike. So there's obviously something wrong with it, and how bad can it really be? I mean, it, it was $100. I paid good money for this, so we're going we're gonna to see if we can get this thing running. We're going to find out if there's anything wrong with it. I don't know. Let's just dig right into this bike and see what, why it was so cheap. So now, I'm just gonna turn on the key. Is anything gonna happen? Oh, look at that. The turn signal's actually working. We got horn on this thing. Yes. Dang. Both turn signals work. Well, <laughs> that, that one's kind of hanging down, but moment of truth. Let's hit the starter button, shall we? Oh, oil level. Wonder why that would be low. Can't have anything to do with this oil leak. Well, let's see just how low that oil level is. And there's no, no dipstick. But there is a sight glass. I can't see anything through that. Let's hit. 12 volts right to the starter motor. Screw it. We got ground hooked up there. Let's hit it. Not turning over. Not a good sign. So let's pull that off. Let's see if we can turn the motor over through the cam bolt right here. Uh-oh. I think this thing's locked up, guys. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. It's not happening. I might be jumping to conclusions here, but I'm gonna drain the oil out and look for metal shavings. Definitely a good bit of sludge on that uh, bolt, that's for sure. That's about to fill up. Yep. Nobody, you don't want that. That's the forbidden juice right there. Well, so far, no oil shavings in there. That's a good sign. Just really thin and a whole lot of sludge. That explains why I couldn't see through the sight glass because it was just completely covered up with black oil. Yep. Oh my gosh. It's a lot of oil, guys. Oh my gosh. Why is this oil so thin and why is there so much of it? I have so many questions. We ain't done yet. I mean, it smells like oil, it doesn't smell like gas. And if it was water, it wouldn't really be like mixed in with the oil. You, it would be like all separated, you'd think. <sighs> Finally done. And it filled this thing up three times. Actually looks decent. There's like no metal shavings in there. So doesn't mean that this thing still didn't bend a valve or something like that. So there's probably a gallon and a half in there. 
This thing was almost empty. It was like to here and it filled it all the way to the top. There was like 10 quarts of oil in this engine and it are, some of it already leaked out. Keep that in mind. And it's only supposed to hold 3,000 cubic centimeters, which is 3.17 quarts. What? This is not adding up. How is there three times the correct amount of oil in this engine? Uh, what? I'm gonna pull this side cover off and we'll see if we can turn the motor over this way. Oh, dang it. What the heck? Something is not right there. So it appears that this side cover has like a big threaded part and I don't know what threaded in there, I guess a cap or something, but the cap has snapped inside the threads. You can see the threads right here and you can see remnants of something broken in there. That's not a good sign. That would explain the oil leak. I might be able to save these threads. I don't know. Oh, got it. There's the threads, some kind of cap or something. Ooh. Oh crap, I think it's turning over. I thought it was definitely seized for sure. Now it won't go anymore. So it seems like it turns over a little bit and then once one of the pistons, I don't know which one, gets to top dead center, it's stuck. My guess, bent valve. Yeah, I don't think this thing's running today, guys. Well, there's clearly something like very wrong with this engine. So there's nothing else to do but pull the engine out of this thing and see what the heck is wrong with it. So, time lapse mode. about 40 minutes later and I think the engine's ready to come out. Oh, it's just sitting on the jack. And the jack's all the way lowered. Come on out. Oh yeah, what? Well, it turns out the kickstand is actually uh, part of the engine. So the bike is gonna fall here in a second. Let's see if I can get the center stand up. Sketchy, it's getting sketchy. Holy crap. This engine is a freaking monster for a V twin. I mean, you'd think it would be way lighter and smaller, but this one is just insane. This has got to be one of the weirdest designed bikes I've ever disassembled. I. Uh, uh, like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, the carburetor air intake boots came from here up into the frame for some reason. Like, why into the frame? I don't even know where the air filter is. Oh, the air filter's in there. Just discovered that. Here's the boot. Nice mono shock, too. Yamaha was like one of the first to really mass produce mono shock bikes, like this one. Just look at how weird this setup is. Let's see if we can pull off the heads of this engine. Oh, the carburetor should be free now. Okay, yeah, there's the carbs. I could not get those off for some reason without the engine being pulled. Kind of weird. Oh, there's some old gas in there. Maybe we can get lucky and see a broken valve through the intake port. That one looks okay. This one looks okay too. Exhaust valves, other than a ton of carbon, this one looks fine. Same with this one, no broken valves. That's surprising. Still can't see what's going on, so I'm gonna have to pull the coils out, pull these brackets off, and then pull the heads off the engine.
need to first remove the cam shaft bolt and the oil line bolt. There's that. And that was pretty loose. Okay, now I think the head should come off. Boy, was I wrong. We got two bolts here. We got one more acorn nut there. Gonna have to pull the spark plug out to get this nut off. That looks okay. Whew, think we're ready to go now. Yeah, I think this wise guy's gonna need a bit of persuasion. Oh, it's moving. Come on. Huh. Did it. This one looks good. No bent valves or anything. <sighs> Woo, there you have it. That is a stuck valve right there. As you can see, the intake valve on the rear cylinder head has gotten stuck somehow. To see why, I'll probably have to pull off the valve cover, but it doesn't seem like it's moving. And I see more damage in there as well. See that nice little mark right there? That is where the valve has kissed the piston. The head looks fine. I don't understand why that valve's stuck. I think I'm gonna have to pull the camshaft out through here and we'll see if it has any flat spots on it. Well, there's the camshaft. Definitely quite, quite a bit of pitting on that lobe. And yep, definite flat spot. Once I pulled the cam out, the valve went back into place. So I don't know. I mean, this camshaft doesn't look terrible. Well, there you have it guys. This thing is not too bad, really not too messed up. The head and the valve seems fine. I don't know why the valve stuck. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. Camshaft looks a little beat. Piston and cylinder are definitely beat, would need replaced. But other than that, for $100, I think I got a great deal on this bike. I would have to put a few hundred into it to get this thing running again. And to be honest, I don't really like this model of bike, so sorry, I know some of you guys will hate to hear this, but I'm just gonna part it out and sell the parts. If you have an XV750 and you need any parts, they'll all be on my eBay store. Link will be down in the description. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love finding out what's wrong with stuff. It makes me happy when I finally figure it out. Hopefully it makes you happy to watch it. If it does, please hit that like button and the subscribe button and also the notification bell, so you can never miss out on another one of my videos. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.